best boxing content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and punch that bell for notifications. Boxing World Weekly, speaking with Ginny Fuchs, uh, ahead of her fight on the undercard of Class of Shields versus Savannah Marshall, and of course, Michaela Mayer versus Alicia Bumgarner. And I'm going to start with where did the passion for combat sports start for you? Well, honestly, I didn't step into a boxing ring or watch boxing or any kind of combat sports till I was 21 years old. I've been an athlete all my life. I've done like every team sport you can think of. And I was actually a big distance runner. I went to LSU as a walk-on on their cross country and track team. And into my freshman, later on into my freshman year, I got in a little trouble. I got, well, I did a prank and it got me kicked off the team, right? So I enjoyed the college life for a good year. And in the meantime, I had met a professional boxer and went to the gym to watch him train. And that kind of like sparked my interest in boxing. And I was like, you know what? I'm not running anymore. And I've always been competitive and always been like competing. So it felt weird that I wasn't at the time. So I was like, I want to learn how to box and, and maybe I can start fighting. And the first day I started, the coach at the gym came up to me and said, I see a lot of potential in you. I want to train you. Would you want to fight and start, you know, getting competition? I was like, yeah, let's do it. And so I did. And um, I was dominating Louisiana, went to my first national tournament in 2010, where they announced that the IOC was adding female boxing to the Olympics. And that kind of really sparked my career and like, you know, all my time and focus. All right. I was like, I'm going to do this boxing now. I'm going to put my all into it. That's awesome. And then obviously you had a couple trips, uh, well, a couple attempts and then a couple trips. You had the attempt in 2012, uh, just missed out. And then you got there in 2016. Am, am I correct? And then you got there also in 2021. Yeah. So I won the Olympic trials for the 2016 Olympics. So there's two qualification processes. After you win the, the trials, you still have to qualify your weight class for your country. And that's international tournaments. And there's two chances. And I came up short, but I still got to go to Rio with the team. And they had already named me captain. That's also how that name came. It's the team captain for the team. So um, I got to go and support my teammates and watch them compete and watch Clarissa win her second gold medal. Um, so I got to experience that Olympics. And I was, my initial plan was to turn pro. But I like seeing, seeing, you know, being there at the Olympics and seeing them compete. I was like, I have to go for another one. I really want to actually compete and be an Olympian. So I decided to go for Tokyo and I made it. And is that why? Because obviously, you know, it's, it's no secret. Uh, uh, you're, you're starting late into this pro game. Is that kind of why is that was your mindset on, you know, trying to accomplish that dream of winning, winning an Olympic medal before you turning pro? Exactly. That's exactly what it is. Because after I didn't go or compete in Rio, I sat down with my coach and was like, ah, oh, should we turn pro? And, and, and he was like, you know, when you sat down to me, your initial plan was, you told me you want to go to the Olympics and win a gold medal. And you were so close in 2016, like so close. Why? Let's just go and do it. Let's just go and do it. And then you can turn pro. pro the pros will always be there. The Olympics will never quite always be there. So we we decided to do it. That's awesome. So what, how do you feel about that decision in hindsight? Um, All around, I feel like it was the right decision because I became an Olympian and I've always wanted to go to the Olympics since I was little. Like that was my dream. It was for running actually, but boxing got me that uh, dream to come true. So yeah, I didn't win my gold medal and it's frustrating and now I'm 34 and going to the pro game and I don't feel like that like my age is slowing me down but I think maybe promoters might look at my age and might be a little hesitant to want to sign me or might think if they invest in me it wouldn't be a good investment because I'm you know my age but I wish they could look past that and see my experience and the amateurs and know and I've told people already I'm on the fast track I don't need like 10 fights to get to my to get a world title fight I'll need, I'll need like after this one two more and i'm ready even one more and i'd be ready so i hope they can look past that so no i don't in hindsight no i don't think it was a bad decision but now i'm gonna have to work much harder in the pros to get you know what i probably could have gotten a little easier four years ago 
Uh, there's a lot of jumping off points there, and I, and I agree with you. But here's what you got going for yourself. For one, uh, staying in the flyweight division, there's currently, you know, the unified flyweight champion in Marlon Esparza, who you've beaten multiple times in the amateurs already. And albeit, you know, despite the age and, and the late start, that's still a fact that happened not too long ago. And not to mention you fighting on this card all of a sudden fighting on this card, putting on a big performance, all of a sudden with some sense of urgency, which I already know you're already mentioning, the fact that you don't want to waste time and, you know, go 10 fights without going for a world title. All of those things combined after September 10th could very well lead you in that direction back to Marlon Esparza. Is that kind of what your thought process is? That is exactly what I am looking for. Um, you know, this fight obviously is, like you said, it's a big fight and I'm going to put on a great performance and I am going to start calling out Marlon. I guess I only have two fights, so maybe I'll have one more before I can officially start, you know, doing what I need to to get that fight or, you know, make it mandatory in some way. But yeah, I, I see that happening in the very near future. <laughs> <laughs> so what kind, I know we said that you're on the fast track, but I want to know what that means for you. So this is your second fight in, in, in five months span. How soon would you like to keep going with this uh, fighting, you know, thing going into trying to get to that world title shot? Yeah, well, that's the thing, you know, I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm not signed by Top Rank. A lot of people think that Top Rank has signed me, but no, I'm not. They have helped me with my pro fight and this fight. I think I need that help to get signed by somebody to get this fast track going. Yeah. Because now, you know, that I'm not signed with anybody, signed with anybody, I kind of have to look at what cards are out there and kind of like go out and be like, you put me on this card, you put me on this card, and that's not as easy as if I was signed by someone and then they could be like, all right, you're fighting this day, you're, you know, and then help me get those fights. So hopefully maybe after this fight, I can get signed by someone and then that'll help me, you know, like, and they'll, and I'll tell them like, all right, let's get another fight in and then let's make this fight with Marlin. And then yeah. we'll move up and make the fight with the other champions. Let's, you know, no time to waste. Exactly. So. I guess I got a couple questions now for you on the promotional side of things, saying that you're not signed with Top Rank. Um, I was aware of that, but Marlon as far as the sign with Golden Boy I actually just re-signed today. Uh, yeah, I wonder, that, is there any talks, is there any talks like right now with you in Top Rank based off of, you know, if so-and-so fight goes well, if this fight goes well, or is there kind are you kind of just a complete free agent where if you wanted to you could you know reach out to oscar de la hoya and uh maybe try to get that try to get a contract there because you know what fight you're looking for no i'm definitely a free agent i could go with anybody right now i mean again i love to go with top rank and they know me i've been around them because of you know michaela and i've always gone to every fight of her so they've gotten to know me well but again i think it's the age thing with them uh, but hopefully they'll look past that. But yeah, I mean, if somebody calls me after the fight and says they want to sign me, whether it's Golden Boy, Matchroom, or somebody, and they give me a good deal and I like what I hear, then yeah, I'm going to go for it. That's awesome. So you got the knockout in your pro debut. Is there is that a part of you know this whole mission? Do you think that putting on uh, show-stopping performances or, or what it might be needed? <laughs> uh, definitely, because that's what people want to see and that's what people enjoy. And especially for women, you know, but what you always hear, you know, you know, women, no, there's no knockouts in women boxing. And so if I can help change that, I think people would be like, OK, let's let's sign this girl. This is what the people want to see. Is that kind of what you were like in the amateurs? What the like, did you stop? Did you stop a lot of girls in the amateurs? Yeah, yeah, I I felt like I had a handful of stoppages. Um, I guess, you know, the average is a little different with the 10 ounce and mm -hmm. headgear and only three rounds. Uh, but, you know, we, we did go three minutes and now I'm only going two minutes here. So uh, that's a little different that, you know, the the little more or the least time in the rounds can't. So I have to do the try to get the knockage out sooner or make it happen sooner. But yeah, I mean, I'm always looking on to put my best performance and a knockout is always uh, <laughs> what I, I, you know, hope to do. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so did you did the you did you, you became a, a fan of boxing, obviously, once you got into the amateurs. Did you also uh, were you a fan of watching it as well? 
so well i eventually did yeah and yeah. then again at the beginning so you want to hear a funny story so you know i'm southpaw right and when i began boxing my coach was like all right well, which hand feels better with the jab and i'm a right-handed person so of okay. course my right hand feels more comfortable so i trained like that for two years with him before i moved back home to houston and got a uh, got a different trainer and I guess he figured out that I was right-handed. I can't remember how. And he goes, why are you fighting Southpaw? And I go, what do you mean? He goes, you're fighting in a left-handed stance. And I go, oh, I am? I didn't even know the whole time I was fighting in the left-handed stance. So after time when I learned more about boxing and grew to, grew to uh, understand it more, yeah, I started watching it more, of course. So did this year, in particular, with women's boxing, uh, kind of sell it for you? I mean, Amanda Serrano versus Katie yeah. Taylor in April uh, probably did a pretty good job at, you know, convincing people that this is this is a proper avenue from some, for some women. Oh, definitely. I was actually there, and I have never been in an arena so loud. I couldn't hear anything. Couldn't even... You couldn't even hear the bell at the end of the round. Nope. So that was, like, the most amazing experiences I've ever had and something I would definitely want to be a part of in the future um, with me in the ring. So yeah, definitely. Uh, that that and this card is such a big stepping stone into female professional boxing and I'm glad I'm a part of this and I'm glad I'm a part of this next stepping stone being on this card. So 100%. Like, yeah. 100%. We were actually there too and uh, I, I agree with you. It was for me, it was uh it was my first, it was my second, you know, big professional boxing event. And um, it was an out of body experience. It was, I was mesmerized by what was going on in that ring. And to be honest with you, I was mesmerized the entire fight week and to the entire yeah. lead up to the event. It, it seemed like it exceeded expectations at every step of the way. So it was phenomenal. And that obviously sets up, uh, sets up this weekend. I want to know what your thoughts are on the two main events in Shields and Bung or Shields and Marshall and Bumgarner and Mayer. How do you think those are going to go? Oh man, I think it's both fights are going to be great. I I don't know if you've been watching some of the recent interviews oh, yeah. and face-offs this week, but it's heated and it's cool. It's cool to see it live. But yeah, both both Michaela and Clarissa, because you know they're they're my Olympic sisters, so I'm around them the whole time. They are just ready to be in there and beat the heck out of the, ha the heck out of Alicia and uh, Savannah. So yeah, get ready for a good show because. It's going to be, it's going to be intense. How is that relationship with Michaela and Clarissa? I mean, obviously that started way back when. I want to know, seeing them turn pro and do what they do, you know, I find it kind of shocking as close as you are with them probably uh, back then. I, I find it shocking that you didn't decide to do it with them to turn pro. Yeah, and again, there's a part of me that wish that wishes I could have started when they did because then I could kind of be experiencing this moment with them on the, in their stage of their career. So yeah, I, I get a little disappointed about that. But again, I got to look at, I, I got to look at that. My dream was to be an Olympian and I can't, you can never take that away from somebody. And that is actually, being an Olympian is one of the hardest things you can do, especially in boxing to get the Olympic. So I, I can't say I regret it, regret waiting sorry regret waiting and all that and even though you know I'm just starting out and I'm not not sharing this moment with them I'm still am sharing the moment with them just at a different level so I can't yep. be too disappointed yeah exactly everything happens for a reason and it all actually worked out for you in the end anyways uh yeah so what's it like now you know enjoying enjoying this at, at the same level as as all pros on this card what's that like for you um, it's just, so it's, it's, you know, funny because we haven't been, us three haven't been back together competing since 2016. Yeah. So it's kind of like, you know, kind of like the good old days and like we have, you know, like nothing's missed a beat and we're back at that moment. But now we're at like the way, you know, the world can see us. We're at a different kind of platform. It's not where we're at some country and nobody can watch us now we have ESPN plus and sky sports showing it so worldwide everybody's watching us so it's just like way more i don't know the word to explain it but it's just like everything we've been waiting for we've been fighting for since we started the amateur level to get to that recognition for women boxing we're like finally here and just getting to experience this moment together is just 
it's just great. Like, I, I, the book's got to be one of the best moments of my life, and, and I'm glad that I have these girls with me. That's awesome. And just yeah. to clarify, you think they're getting the stoppage on Saturday? I, <sighs> I think it is definitely in the works. So, a stoppage, I think it is. it could happen. We'll see, but... Um, I definitely think both of them are going to win by points, regardless if a stoppage happens. But I think there might be a stoppage. 